Hi there, my name is Paul Harvey from the Rakta Mobile Innovation Studio, and I'm here today with my colleague Simon Feller from the University of Glasgow to talk about multi-party session types for safe runtime adaptation in an actor language. If I were to pose the question to the audience of what were the two most important things of 2020 at the beginning of the year, probably no one would be able to tell me this. Of course, though, they ended up being quite important, <clears throat> perhaps one more than the other. The point here is that in order for us to successfully achieve existence or, or to operate correctly, we have to be able to adapt to our environment, no matter what it may throw us. This is just as true for us human beings as it is for software systems, where perhaps the need to adapt comes from the, the buggy code that has been deployed out there or needs to be patched. The need to optimize or improve for cost, for uh, performance or for just general efficiency. The need to adapt to different hardware platforms, either because of instruction set architecture, resource constraints, <clears throat> or, or general operation. And of course, the, the operational environment of the software components themselves needs to be taken into account so the system can adapt. In considering how to adapt or how to achieve dynamic adaptation for software systems to these problems or, or others, there are five kind of principles you can think about. So it's the ability to discover new software components at runtime that may never have you know, been considered during design time or compile time because you're, you're later down the, the track. Equally, the ability to install this software on, on different hardware platforms, to migrate it between different ones for load balancing, for, for robustness, to replace this software without necessarily restarting the system, as is in the case of kernel modules or embedded systems. And of course, these software modules or components have to be able to interact with each other, <clears throat> irrespective of the location in which they operate. So it turns out actor-based systems are really nice uh, way to encapsulate all these different concepts or, or principles uh, we did some work on this where we created uh, an actor based language with all of this natively built into the grammar. So you can express installation, migration, replacement, discovery, etc. Uh, and, and this is this was a lot of fun to do. Um, and in this case, you can kind of specify how, how these different actors interact via channels. And, you know, those channels have types and you can <clears throat> enable all the points. So that's great. You write your code and it compiles. Job done. Um, the system says, yes, it, it works, right? Well, probably not perfectly, especially when you consider dy this dynamic adaptation, because as you bring in new elements to the system that hasn't been necessarily previously thought of, just because in traditional typing systems, you can see that, yes, they do conform. It doesn't necessarily mean the behavior will be correct. So for example, are we gonna deadlock by forming a new connection to a discovered actor? or if I want to replace this particular actor, when is the right time to update him? And of course, at the end of the day, just because the code compiles doesn't mean that it's right. And as software systems become increasingly larger and more complicated, how do we know that we're actually doing what we think we're doing? Multi-party session types um, are one way to begin to tackle this problem. Uh, so on the left, you can see a pictorial representation uh, where you have three different uh, roles and how those roles are communicating with each other in order. And on the right, you can see some scribble code, which defines a global protocol for everything happening on the left. So here you can see, you know, a, a title or type string is being sent from buyer one to seller, etc. And you can see a sequential set of actions, as well as a choice where, where you have different branches forming. This global protocol can actually be projected into a local protocol from the perspective of one of the roles, in this case, the seller. So the seller expects to receive a message of title of type string from buyer one and then send a message of in of, of quote type to buyer uh, one, etc. That's great. Um, and it was actually enhanced. So it was uh, multi-party session types can now include explicit connection actions. Uh, so in this case, you can see the code in the right uh, in orange showing how a store can be connected to a courier through in, in within the protocol itself uh, to send some messages. Then you have some disconnection actions, et cetera. So this gives you the kind of dynamic connectivity in the session, uh, in the multi-party session types, which is necessary. So what do we do? We enhanced Ensemble to make it into Ensemble S, including this multi-party session types to do adaptation. So specifically for discovery, replacement and interaction, we add in session types. So what does that look like? So here in the top left, you can see the interface 
which was previously defined in the communication channels where information was conveyed between actors. So this has been augmented now to note the session, in this case client, that this particular channel should be interacting with. On the right hand side, you can see the definition of a session type in the language itself. Um, the body of this statement is actually just scribble code, so the compiler can understand and parse this. Using this, what we do is we augment the definition of an actor itself to say that not only does it now present a particular interface, but it also now follows a particular session. And what that means is the compiler will check the contents of the behavior clause within each actor to ensure that whatever sequence of actions or <clears throat> is happening within the behavior will be reflected and equal to the content of the session that the actor is supposed to follow. Uh, so here you can see on the left for the slow actor and on the right for the quick actor. Um, the plumbing of this can be a little tricky, uh, especially the integration of the, the session types uh, <clears throat> itself. So what we did is we took the Scribble uh, approach. So from Scribble in a global protocol, you can project this to a local protocol. We then use the Samungo tool, uh, which was a previous work for generating Java templates. Uh, and we changed the back end on this to generate Ensemble S templates. And then the Ensemble compiler can pick up and make it executable. So the code you see behind you was automatically generated, except for the bubble sort and the quick sort. So the idea here is that you get a template, and then based on the template, you can add your own logic. So using these definitions, what we can now do to achieve the discover and replace activities, uh, discover has been augmented to include a accounting session so that instead of just finding actors that meet query alpha and also present interface accounting I, now they also have to conform to the accounting session. So everything that's returned, if anything, uh, will be actors that follow the accounting session. And using this information, you can now safely replace, uh, in this case, actor S0 with fast actor, because the type, the compiler knows that both of these are following the accounting session. With that, uh, I say thank you very much, and I hand over to my colleague, Simon. As well as implementing Ensemble S, we've formalized it as a core calculus. Here's the global type for the online shop example we saw earlier. The double arrow shows that the customer connects to the store by sending their login details and then enters into a loop. At this point, the customer can do one of three things, request a price for an item, order an item, or quit. If they request an item, they send the item name and get back a price. Now, if you're familiar with multi-party session types, you may have noticed we're using an undirected presentation of global types, which in particular allows us to connect to a role in one branch of a choice, but not in others. Uh, global types are convenient, but they're actually not integral to our formalism. So instead, our formalism is based around local types. A protocol maps role names to local types. So here's the protocol for the online shop example that we saw earlier. You can see here that the store role begins by accepting login credentials from the customer before receiving a command. If the customer wants to order an item and sends their address, then the store will connect to a courier, receive a reference, and then wait for the courier to disconnect. The store then forwards the reference and disconnects from the customer. Here we can see the implementation of the store actor. We see that it follows the store type and each of the communication actions follow the session type. This particular bit of code is most important to see how our actor-based setup works with session types and adaptation. So the store discovers a courier actor which returns a PID. We can then use that PID in the connect statement to invite it into the session. We support session typing via a flow sensitive effect type system enforced mainly by the judgment on this slide. So we can pronounce this as given an actor following T under typing environment gamma and with current session type S, term M has type A and updates the session type to S prime. This means, for example, that we can only type a send construct if the current local type is a send type. We've also designed an operational semantics for the core calculus, where a running actor is represented as a four-tuple of a runtime name, a currently evaluating term, connection state, and a behavior, which is the next term to run after the current one completes. So let's have a look at an example. So on the left is a ping pong protocol, where a pinger connects to a ponger by sending a ping message, and the ponger responds with a pong message. The pinger implementation discovers a ponger actor, connects to it, waits for the pong, and waits for it to disconnect. The ponger implementation accepts a ping, sends a pong, and then disconnects. 
Here's the runtime representation of these two actors. So we begin by discovering the Ponga, and then we get a process ID for the Ponga. We substitute that through, and at this point, the connect and accept actions can synchronize. At this point, we then generate a session name restriction, so that's the, the new S on the side, and set the connection states of each actor. For example, we can read the first connection state as taking part in session S as role Pinga connected to role Ponga. Now we can receive the Pong, and then the Ponga can disconnect. And at this point, the Ponga is now disconnected again. So you can see that the connection state for the Pinga is updated, and the Ponga has now gone back to disconnected. Since the Ponga is finished, it executes its body again. And now since the Pinga is executed, and it is the only actor left in the session, we can finish the session. And at this point, the Pinga can evaluate its body again too. So let's have a look at the properties that our core calculus enjoys. So classical approaches to multi-party session types are built around binary duality of session types, which unfortunately doesn't scale to explicit connection actions. Instead, we make use of recent work by Scalas and Yoshida on non-classical multi-party session types, where safety is treated as a semantic property. The key idea is that we define a labeled transition system on collections of local types and ensure all reachable states are safe. We only need to prove type preservation for the weakest safety property, and then we can customize this property to get stronger guarantees. The key technical contribution of the core calculus is to use this technique to prove safety and progress properties for a language design, including explicit connection actions. So the safety property ensures that we don't exchange incompatible payloads or try to select unsupported labels. To get a progress property, we need to ensure three further things. So first, we need to ensure that each active role in the session must eventually be able to synchronize. Second, that each potential send action must eventually be matched by a receive action. And third, if the protocol can't reduce, then it must just consist of a single role with the terminated session type. This reflects the intuition that all invited roles eventually safely disconnect. Given protocols satisfying these properties, we can get some strong results. So first, if we have a safe set of protocols, then reduction preserves typing. This means that every actor follows its session type and we never get a type mismatch. We also get a progress property, which means if a system stops executing, then either it can't find an actor to invite, or every actor is either accepting or terminated. Okay, so to wrap up. We've seen that the ability to discover, replace, and interact with components is really useful, especially in dynamic execution environments. But on its own, this type of adaptation can introduce communication errors. In this work, we show how it's possible to integrate an actor-based language and multi-party session types with explicit connection actions in order to support safe dynamic self-adaptation. The meta theory can get quite tricky and we need to use non-classical approaches uh, in order to get safety results. Thanks for your attention and we'd be happy to take any questions.